Girlhood has had its ups and its downs. And here's what I've learned so far. Six, seven, eight. Women are awesome, but can also be cruel. I'm doing my best and boys, they kind of drool. My hormones are wild and my boobs kind of sore. It's only day 200. We have so much more to experience together. We're just getting... Oh, man. It's rough. It's rough. It's rough. Ah! 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 <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, man. Welcome back, everyone, to the Point Blank Podcast. I'm your host, Reformed Bad Boy Dryden Joss. Today, I've got a doozy for you. Now, I know what I'm about to show you has already been... All over the internet, all over the conservative sphere. I don't necessarily know about the Christian sphere, but it's definitely been out there. And I am late to it, but hey, I have an upload schedule I gotta stick to, so I didn't get to upload yesterday. I upload Monday, Wednesday, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So I'm late to the party, but that's okay. We're still gonna talk about it. The only difference is, is I'm gonna be bringing scripture to this topic as opposed to just... This is weird and unnatural. Yeah, but why is it unnatural? Why biblically is this not truth? Why is this disgusting? For those of you who don't know, a little bit of backstory. This man, his name is Dylan Mulvaney, is recently becoming pretty popular on TikTok. He is currently on day 200 of girlhood, not womanhood, girlhood. Recently as well, this was back in September, he was speaking at a Forbes Power Women's Summit. And this was a month ago. So he was only 170 odd days into, quote, being a girl. And he says that. He says he's not a woman. He says he's a girl. 170 days into girlhood. And now he has the authority to speak on femininity and women's movements at the Forbes Power Women Summit. And he is a hashtag Forbes woman. If you don't believe me, you can see it here on Twitter. Right there. So, Dylan Mulvaney recently has exploded into popularity, getting his start from TikTok. I don't know how many followers on TikTok he has. I really don't even want to look it up. But on Instagram, he's got 584,000 followers. In his description, he says TikTok, he's got 8.3 million followers. He is very popular. He's popular for his transition into being a girl. Again, his words. Recently, though, he was on the Ulta Beauty podcast. Now, I actually know, you got to give me credit for this. I actually know what Ulta Beauty is. And I know that because I have a sister and I've bought makeup there before for her. I know. Somehow, the reformed bad boy stepped foot into an Ulta beauty salon. And I survived. It was okay. I was okay. I lived. It was traumatic. I have PTSD. Uh, I'm triggered. And I'm a survivor and a victim. But I did live. And I bought makeup with my own money. But that's what you do for love. That's what you do for your little sister who likes makeup. So Ulta Beauty has a podcast. Their YouTube channel is pretty weak. Only 84,000 subscribers. And the host of this podcast is David Lopez. This monstrosity of a man. His triceps put my, trice my triceps to shame. That's that's scary. Let's not look at that any longer. Uh, David Lopez, here's the thing. I don't want to bash these guys, Dylan and David. David Lopez is actually a phenomenal hairstylist. And he does hairstyles for celebrities. And check these out. They're amazing. You got some, this is art. This is, this is glamour. This is art. This looks incredible. And then every once in a while he pops in. And it's not right. It's not right. And I'll explain why biblically, why it's not right. Once we get into it. First, we're going to watch a series of clips from the Ulta Beauty podcast with David Lopez and this special guest star. 
uh, Dylan Mul- Mulvaney. And I listened to the hour long podcast episode so that you guys don't have to. And here are the the biggest problems I had with it, and we're gonna we're gonna get into it. So first, I'm gonna go to the first clip, which is starts roughly about here. It's for kids mm. and teens that don't have the opportunity to express themselves the way that we obviously wanted to once upon a time. Yeah. And I get a lot of hate about calling myself a girl and not a woman. And because, you know, that term, they, they think I'm infantilizing myself or that, you know, once you turn 18, you're no longer a girl. And I'm like, what about the, tell that to the Spice Girls. You know what I mean? Um, or like, are we going on a girl's trip or my girlfriend? Girl summer. Yes. What? Yeah. Like, and, and so I think some of that's rooted in transphobia. But I think what the beauty of femininity specifically for you and me has been finding it in adulthood because we're picking up the pieces that were left behind a long time ago. Even that, you know, you at 10 and telling that story of Betty Boop, like when you saw that look that your dad gave you, that told you something and you banked that moment and you might have self-corrected. And I know I self-corrected over and over again up until just like two years ago. I think we're on a similar timeline. And Uh, that's enough of that. So Dylan, I don't know what he's talking about. It's a little bit confusing. But besides the fact that these are two men talking about femininity as if they can understand any aspect of womanhood other than the outside effect, meaning hair, nails, makeup, certainly looking beautiful is part of womanhood, but it's not every part of it. So Dylan here is explaining how there's a lot of people who are upset with him for calling himself a girl. And he explains this, and by his own logic, it makes sense. He's saying that you don't become a woman overnight. You start as a girl, and then eventually you become a woman. The issue is this is a grown man who's now pretending to be an adolescent girl so that he can someday become a woman, which we know can never happen. Now, I have to ask the question, if he was to ever have sexual relations with someone, I don't know his type, Would that make that person a pedophile? Because he claims to be a girl. Now, I know that's a silly question, but that's because all of this is silly. It is silly for a grown man to pretend to be a girl. Now, the other guy, David, has a full beard and long blonde hair, huge muscles. He's wearing five-inch heels. But at least he makes a little bit more sense. And that is because he explains that he is gender fluid. And gender, by his own definition, is the outside. It's it's his expression. So he expresses himself on the outside as a male or female. That I can kind of get behind. I don't like it. I don't think it's appropriate. But at least I can understand it. Dylan is saying that he's a girl. And not that he's just expressing himself as a girl, but he is a girl. We're going to go on to the next clip. Which I think is actually just right about here. The pandemic was a huge moment to be like, oh, none of this really matters. I might Mm -hmm. as well be who I want to be. And I think I never saw myself as beautiful before this gender identity um, sort of journey started because I didn't think boys were allowed to be beautiful. Mm. And and I was like trying to be handsome and yet that was didn't feel right either. And so it is really special to look in the mirror or like have my. So he says that boys can be beautiful. Which actually is true. You know, I, I don't think that men necessarily should be beautiful. That should not be their end goal to be beautiful. We read in. 1 Corinthians 11.7, it talks about submission. It talks about the authority of men and the submission of women in the right order, the right context. 1 Corinthians 11.7 says, For a man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God. So man is the image and glory of God. But woman is the glory of man. So in a way, biblically, women can look beautiful and i think they they should look beautiful that shouldn't be everything to them because we know that beauty can be vain 
but they should be beautiful. There's another verse. Let me find it. Proverbs 12, 4 says an excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but he, but she who shames him is as rottenness in his bones. So an excellent wife is the crown of her husband. And here we see that women is the glory of man. Men don't have to be beautiful. I don't think that that should be a thing for men to strive for. Because women are the ones who are supposed to be beautiful for man. Women are the glory of men. And there's something beautiful in that. I mean, think about every history, think about every war in history ever. You know, there's war for land and resources, but what do men want to do with that land and resource? They give it to their wife. They give it to their women so that women can take it and form something beautiful from it. That's what women do. Uh, we just talked about this verse the other day. Let me find it in my hashtag physical Bible gang. Hashtag physical Bible gang. It was Proverbs. Six. Verse 26, I believe. For the price of a prostitute is only a loaf of bread, but a married woman hunts down a precious life. Men don't hunt down a precious life. Men aren't hunting down comfort and beautiful objects to put in their home. If they are, that's a little bit silly because that's what women do. You build a house and women turn it into a home. Michael Foster a pastor that everyone hates. He's the author of, a good, of It's Good to Be a Man. I think this quote started with him, but he says, look how you give women flour and they make bread. You give women a house and they make a home. Look how you give women sperm and they make a baby. Women make things beautiful. They make themselves beautiful. We know that their hair is the glory of women, and that is why crazy feminist leftists cut off all their hair. It's because they are doing what's unnatural. And that's not good. But boys can't be beautiful. I'm not sure that they should be beautiful. Jesus himself, we know that he was not a man to look at. He said there was no special, unique beauty to Jesus. Let's continue on. See me as a woman. Mm -hmm. See me as a girl. So... Looking back, I, I don't think that social media and transitioning is like the healthiest pairing, but I'm so happy to do it yeah. because I know that it's part of why I'm here. Yeah. It brings me in connection with really cool people like you. And I think that's one of the best gifts that we have about social media is is finding other people like us, like mm -hmm. relating to people in a way. And I've learned so much from TikTok. Like mm -hmm. I, I feel like, you know, it's like school. It's like a fifth year of college. Um, you can find anything on there. Mm -hmm. But do you feel... Uh, oh, that's silly to learn from TikTok as if that's where all the knowledge is. Uh, that wasn't quite the clip I was looking for. I think my times are a bit off, so let's go here. I think sometimes we yeah. feel as queer people that our experience, we have to share it because yes. that's the world we live in. Like, okay, I'm, I'm going to come out. I have to share it with people. It's your own journey. It's your own private space. Yeah. We have chosen this journey. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what I like to hear. At least he's being honest. He has chosen this journey because I'm so tired of hearing that gay people and trans people and women are always women, even if they have a penis, that they're born this way. But right here, we have it from him himself. He is saying that we chose this journey, and I'm so thankful he's being honest. It's about time. Let's continue on. I have another clip. Actually, I want to find that clip. That one was important. Let's see if I can find it. Maybe here. Blowing up in mm -hmm. my career, social media, yay. But also all these important, you know, transition moments, I'm some of which I'm kind of missing out on because they are private. And I, I was planning on, um, the, in March, actually, I just told you I was going to go work at a bookstore and I was going to go privately you know, transition for a few months to a year, tell my agent, stop, you know, I was an actor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, you know, maybe don't submit me for a while until I'm passing. There it is. Till I'm passing. Why, if this man is already a woman by his own admission, does he have to pass? 
If by saying you are a woman, or if by saying you are what you are, why do you have to pass? If there's no difference between the sexes, there's no difference between genders, you can say whatever you want to be, why in the world go through hormone therapy, surgeries, to pass? It is because he knows truthfully that he is not a woman, but he wants to pass as a woman, but he will never be a woman. I'm going to talk a little bit more about biblical femininity as well, uh, but I want to get through this. Let's see. Probably this is going to be the most outrageous aspect of this entire podcast episode. Again, this is an hour long that I listen to so that you guys don't have to. Let's go to here. Some of untrue like ideas, like, oh, maybe I won't find love now. Like there were, that was part of the grief. Mm. And now on the other side of it, I'm like, oh, all of those sort of challenges or those finalized moments that I thought I was letting go actually just got sort of like refreshed. And now I know I can find love. I know I can still be a performer. I know that I can have, I want to have a family. I want to be a mom one day. Mm. And I absolutely can. And that's why. See, that's the thing. He will never be able to be a mother. He cannot physically be a mother. Now, there are lots of women who have issues, who have infertility. They have had hysterectomies because of cancer or various other things. They've had their breasts removed because of breast cancer. But at some point in their life, they had the potential and the capacity to be a mother. This man cannot be a mother. He absolutely cannot. He doesn't have breasts to provide nutrients to the baby, and we know that we can use formula, and many women do use formula, but it is not the preferred, it is not the natural way to do it. It's good, but it's not the best. He doesn't have a uterus. He doesn't have ovaries. He cannot produce a baby without using a woman and appropriating her body, using her body as if she's just a slab of meat. He's got to impregnate a woman with his sperm which is the male aspect of all of this. He cannot be a mother. Now, even if he was to adopt a child and call himself a mother, that child will never be his. He doesn't have the capacity or the understanding of what it even entails to be a woman to begin with. And he admits that. He says that he's going through girlhood right now. He doesn't know everything about being a woman. But he never will get to that point. And it's because there are so many biological, physical, spiritual differences between men and women. Women will never understand what it's like to be a man. Men will never understand what it's like to be a woman. There's so many just differences in our bodies. There's so much, so much differences in our psyche, how we act, what we do. Women are soft. They can literally grow babies in their womb. And then they can nurse it. They can feed that baby with just what she has eaten turned into breast milk. Men cannot do that. It's not possible. I'm going to get to some verses in a bit. Like I said, I want to get through this. Uh, let's see. Right here. 22. Four, I that they, them pronoun. I still go by she, they because the they still feels good. But I'm so glad that I had... Right there, the, de- the they feels good. That's exactly what I wanted to point to in this clip. The they feels good. He is doing all of this. He is looking at you and telling you to call him a woman because it feels good. That's what he cares about. All of this is just so he can feel good. He is bending truth so that he can feel good. That doesn't make is, any sense to me. And what womanhood is. How do you um, see expressing the nuances of your personal journey of what girlhood is and what femininity is versus what society tells us a girl is or a woman is? Right. Because an argument can be made, has been made with me. Well, if you're saying you're she, so you're just saying that's what women should look like. They're supposed to be beautiful and have long hair. And I'm like, no, I, I understand that. I give that space yes. for sure. Yes. Have you experienced that? And how do you kind of make space for that in your world? The bottom line was when I 
came out publicly as a girl on that first day, I had no idea what girl it was. <laughs> That's the whole point. I still don't. I'm freaking figuring it out every day. And you have to let people figure those things out because my, the constant um, critique I was getting was like, oh, this girl thinks it's all about makeup, thinks it's like womanhood is all about wearing dresses. Because I didn't know anything else. I hadn't had an opportunity, babe. Okay, let me lift the Give me a minute. Give me a year. <laughs> yeah. and, and See, the funny thing is, though, is that he will never understand what it means to be a woman. Just like I will never understand what it means to be a woman. Because it is not just makeup. And that's pretty crazy for Ulta Beauty, a makeup company. But there's more to makeup to be a woman. So, and I want to now talk about some things that, that it does mean to be a woman, and then we'll go back to that at the very end. Here's what it means to be a woman. I've been researching biblical femininity so that hopefully I can explain, hopefully I can explain a little bit, not from my own wisdom, but from God's wisdom, from the scripture's wisdom. We know the first thing is that women are made in the image of God. Which means that there are some aspects to women, just as there, there are some aspects to men, that are rooted in what God made them to be. And I think the first one is what I was alluding to earlier when I said that women hunt down a precious life. Women make things comfortable, they make things soft, they make things tasty. Women are good cooks, they're good... Uh, at, at cleaning, at, at making things better. They put a bunch of pillows that you don't even need. Why? Because it's comfortable, it looks nice, and it builds a homely aspect to the home. Here in Genesis 2.18, it says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now we're losing the aspect of... We're, we're losing the original language when this was written in Hebrew. The word helper is a beautiful word that doesn't translate very well. And I'm getting this from MidtownColumbia.com. What is biblical femininity? The Hebrew word is ezer and comes from two root words. One means strength. The other means to rescue. Put these two words together and you get a strong rescuer or a life-giving strength. The Bible uses it 21 times, always in the context of a rescue or support. 17 out of 21 times, it's talking about God. God calls himself the strong rescuer translated helper. And that is what he says. Women are women to their man to men are strong rescuers. They are helpers. It means that they support people with a strength. And we can see that as well. In Titus 2.3, which says, Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good, and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. So women, biblically, are strong rescuers, they're helpers, they help their man to do what? What is the end goal? What is the end goal of helping her man? Why is she just a slave to him? Just submitting to everything he says for his own purpose? No, because we know according to Ephesians 5 that he has to lay down his life for her. So all of this is for a greater purpose. All of this is to really give glory to God, but it's also to raise up children and if you don't have the capacity to have children, you can raise up other people's children. Like this, it says older women are to teach what is good, to train young women to love their husbands and their children. And that is something that only women can do. They have the ability to nurture. Like I said earlier, men can't nurture. Men can't breastfeed. And formula is good. Formula is a good thing. But it's not the best. And the best is only available to women. Only women can bring the best when it comes to nurturing children. They have this special ability. I said this story in a couple podcast episodes ago. 
where I was babysitting for a few minutes, a little girl, and then a woman who was actually watching her, I was watching her for a few minutes while a woman was busy doing something. She comes up, the little girl said, mama, and it wasn't even her mom. And she forgot me and ran after this woman who wasn't even her mom because she knows that the nurturing one is the woman that is ingrained into us. When people are put within the boundaries of the way that they were created, they are free to express their gender in a better way, which, you know, is the same as their sex. When I have boundaries, when I'm not allowed to do womanly things, that gives me so much more freedom to do masculine things, biblically, and it's vice versa for women. Let's see we, uh, what else we have. Um... I got another verse here, 1 Thessalonians 2, 7. Paul is talking about how he acted with the people of that church. He says, but we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. When Paul wants to say that he was gentle, he says, like a nursing mother. That's the most gentle thing you can think of in that circumstance. So, biblical femininity... I don't have a complete grasp on it, but I know what it's not. And it's not a man stealing from womanhood. And for all the women who are listening right now, you should be offended that men are getting to speak at women's conferences. That men think they know what it means to be a woman and they think that it's little more than makeup and long hair. In dresses. There's so much more to it. So much more. I have last little clip here. Something that's disgusting. And let me pull that up. It is. Right here. This is. Foul. Like it feels almost sacred in a way. Right. And so I want you to have one. Thank you. Just, you never know. And I thought maybe it might so be what fun he's to holding I've never signed one. Tucked you know what? Before. I think you should sign it. You might it. be the only one to ever have a signed <laughs> Dylan tuck tape. Just uh, Dylan signing the tuck tape. Um, I feel like... So for those of you who don't know, tuck tape is a special pad of tape that is used to tuck your dick back into your butt cheeks. Now, no, I didn't look that up, but I think I understand what tuck means, and I don't want to understand further, and I definitely don't want to look it up for fear that I would see a video on accident. But if you're at the point in your mentality where you are tucking your genitals, which is giving a capacity to damage them. You know, Dylan speaks about how he wants to be a mother someday. He is on hormones. He is tucking his penis. At a certain extent, he might not even be able to be a father. Because his boys will not swim. But let's not forget, Dylan Mulvaney has 8 million followers on TikTok. He's open with his tuck tape. And therefore, teaching children... Most likely, because we know the audience that TikTok draws, it's typically younger people, younger than 25. I can't say for certain, but I can say with just wisdom that there's a certain number of children that are watching him talk about tuck tape. And I've seen other YouTubers, now this, not Dylan, not speaking about Dylan, I have seen other YouTubers... I want to be clear here that have taught children how to hide chest binding and tucking from their parents in order to live their true selves and quote unquote affirm their true gender. But this is not affirming their true gender. This is the opposite. They are saying you should hate the gender you were born with that God gave to you and you should fake it till you make it. 
And the issue is, is that a lot of these kids think that they can make it. They look at Dylan. They look at his millions of followers, his 584,000 followers on Instagram. And they say, if he can do it, if he can someday te teach at Forbes Women's Summit, why can't I? And what I'm telling you right now is that this will lead to destruction. This road will lead to death. And we've seen it already. The suicide rates, the attempted suicide rates are preposterous compared to suicide rates of any other mental health disorder. It's on par with schizophrenia. And I've said this before, people got mad at me. Slaves didn't even commit this much suicide. Ho Jews in the Holocaust didn't even commit this much suicide. This road only leads to destruction and death. And it is not because of people like me trying to point you to healing, true help. When you can come to terms with what gifts God has given you, whether that's masculinity or femininity, when you come to terms with that, you will live a much happier, healthy life within the boundaries of that sex. And I think that's all I have to say about that. So let's go on to the comment section. See if we got any good comments today. If not, I'm going to be absolutely furious. And I'm going to go crazy. I'm just kidding. All right, let's see. Tall Loaf says, how do I report a channel? Okay. Right out the gate with just how do I report this channel. If you don't like it, you don't have to listen. That simple. But I'm glad I live in your head rent free. Tall Loaf also says, hail Satan. I'm a gay femboy furry Satan is here to say your content is quite cringe. Gay femboy furry Satan Satanist. Okay. Uh, you do you. Gurana says, I choose chaos. And that's referring to when I said Christ or chaos. I'd like you to, uh, I'd like to see how far chaos takes you. Let's see. Asher O'Neill says, this was a great video. I love your videos and podcasts. Thanks for bringing the truth. Thank you so much. Thank you for the, uh, the great comment. That was, that was awesome. Official Nerdy Channel says, this was a great video, Dryden. Andrew Tate is definitely an interesting person. I agree with a lot of the things he says, but I wish he didn't cuss so much. Yeah, that's the thing. I wish he didn't cuss so much. He cusses a lot, so it makes it hard to watch. I, I don't really watch Andrew Tate, but he does cuss a lot. Amy says, why is he wearing a full-on bulletproof vest? Like, OMG, I'm so bad, boy. Look, people are getting shot out here. And for those of you who don't know, my vest says, no king but Christ. Let's see. Scott Hearn says, My man's rocking kinky curls while wearing a laser tag vest, perverting Christianity to fit neoliberal fascism. Did I, not, didn't I read this comment? Yeah, I think I read this comment. Never mind. Look, you can choose to do things your way concerning Christianity, and I choose to do things God's way. And that's the difference between you and me. So let's see, live comments, Sebi Meme says, do you watch Louder with Crowder? I do occasionally. I do. Every once in a while. Not too often. His jokes kind of go above my head, go over my head, because he's got references to 80s and 90s movies that I just haven't seen, and celebrities as well, so I don't really get all of that. I am, in fact, the oldest Gen Z. I'm right at the the breaking point between millennial and Gen Z. So I am Gen Z. There's a lot of things I don't understand about Lyra with Crowder's humor. Calvinist for life says Christ is king. That's true. Christ is king. Like I just said, my patch on my vest here, no king but Christ. That is the only way we're going to make it in life is when we continually remember that Christ is king. Now, let me think. Is there anything applicable to today's lesson? I think, yeah. I think people are getting tired of this. I haven't seen too much backlash because, again, I'm not on social media. But what I've heard through the Vine is that there's a lot of people who are tired of pretending that men are women and that these men somehow know a thing about womanhood. But what these men are doing is they are stealing womanhood and using it to make lots of money 
and to make themselves, as they said earlier, in their own words, to feel good about themselves. This is pride. This is selfishness. And pride and selfishness is not womanly. Biblically, womanhood is about servitude. It's about comforting, nurturing, being soft, being submissive. Just like for men, biblical masculinity is about servitude, sacrifice, being strong, being hard, and submitting as well. It is not just for men. I mean, it's not just for women to submit, but it's also for men to submit. And at the end of the day, you have to submit to Christ. And that's where I'm going to leave you guys. Are you submitting today to Christ? I think I'm going to leave you here for now. If you haven't already, please support me on Patreon. We are one patron away from having 10 Patreon supporters. That is awesome. Thank you guys so much for your financial support in this recession. In this economy? Thank you guys so much. It means a lot. I have good content coming out. We are filming a big time video tomorrow. Another on-campus video that's going to be fun. If you haven't already, please join the Discord as well for some good Discord or discourse, I guess. Is that why they call it Discord? Is it discourse? I don't know. But thanks for following. Thanks for watching. And I will see you all in Friday's episode where we do have the special members block with the Patreon-only supporters. Only they get to watch the members block. So thank you guys so much. I will see you all on Friday. Have a blessed day. 